I've been working for seven years now at an organization called Just Vision, and our mission is to research, document, and disseminate the stories of Palestinians and Israelis who are working on the ground to try to end the conflict using nonviolent strategies. Uh, we had done a film prior to Gudrus called Encounter Point, which followed uh, Palestinian and Israeli bereaved families or people who had lost their homes and how they managed to channel the, their suffering towards a positive, constructive way of working together. So we've been following what's going on on the ground for seven years now. And when uh, we decided to make the story of Budrus, the movement had already spread to villages across the West Bank. And what we were able to do was uh, uh, cooperate and, and build alliances with activists, Israelis, Palestinians, Americans, Swedes, French, who had been in Budrus at different times and who were carrying cameras, small cameras, um, not to make a film, but to document potential human rights violations. And, and then we, were, we, we started a process of building the trust of the uh, main, let's say, characters uh, in Budrus, including not only the Palestinian leaders of this movement, the female uh, leaders, who was a 15-year-old teenage girl, um, and uh, the, the actual border police officers and Israeli army spokespeople who were sent to Budrus to try to crush this movement. We wanted to hear from everybody's side really how it felt like in this one village to go through this intense process of a, a non-violent movement. If the border police officers knew that uh, their actions were being filmed, they were less likely, sometimes, not always, to commit serious um, uh, violence against the protesters. Most Palestinians engaged in non-violent resistance do it because it's the most strategic way for Palestinians to gain freedom. Uh, they believe that by joining with Israeli activists, they have the best chance possible to end the occupation and build an independent state. So absolutely, non-violence has never been easy for no community across the world, and that's why it's so extraordinary that this village was able to do that, and that's why we wanted to make a film about that. It's a totally indigenous grassroots movement of Israeli activists who have decided that they had enough and that they need to do uh, as individuals what they believe in is ethical and that they don't want to look back and, 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 and pretend that they didn't know in the future what was going on. They know what's happening and they want to be on the ground, not saying not just saying that they want peace and not just wanting to have Palestinian friends to feel good about themselves that they have Palestinian friends, but actually being on the ground, uh, risking their lives with the Palestinians and really showing Palestinians that there is a, there is a, um, there is a, a real partner for peace. Uh, and I think that for in the, in the Israeli side, for the Israeli activists, it's also quite phenomenal because it's the first time where you know, in what happened in this village where they get in and all the political parties, including Hamas members, who are seen, you know, and who legitimately are seen as uh, wanting to, you know, alienate Israel because they haven't signed any acceptance of Israel, um, seeing these members of Hamas accepting and embracing and, and being shocked at first that they were Israeli activists, but then very much appreciating and I think learning something from the experience because if people don't meet, then the, the, the demonizations that you make of each other can get solidified uh, in a way in your mind that it's very hard to have any compassion uh, and, and prevent violence from happening. When you start building relationships with the other side, it's much harder for you then to justify violence against the other side.